guys, it's Rebecca. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. Today's video is going to be my February reading wrap up. And these are the books that I read in the month of February. So I, I did really, really good. I finished 11 books, but not really. <laughs> I finished seven actual books, two graphic novels and two original audible um, stories. I'm going to start, I'm going to try to put this in some sort of order because I feel like I always make this video too long. But anyway, from my A to Z reading challenge, I'm trying to read books. Um, I had completed five total uh, out of the 26 letters, well, 27, because I always try to add a book that has a number in the title. Uh, and this time around, I was able to finish four uh, to add to my five. So total, I have done nine. And as far as the 52 book, uh, book challenge, this is a book club type group that I am in Facebook. Um, every year, like I said, I always complete the Pop Sugar Reading Challenge, but this year I am doing the 52 book uh, because it's just a new new, new club, new, new book club, and their prompts are a little bit different. I, and I like the prompts better from this group than the ones that the Pop Sugar group came up with. So anyway, I completed 19 of those prompts. Now, a disclaimer, the purpose of this book club is to make you read 52 books a, a year. I used one book for multiple prompts. Um, you're really not supposed to do that because they wanna make you read 52 prompts. I mean, 52 books, one for each prompt, but since I already read more than 52, I think it's okay to use one book for more than one prompt because I'm already meeting the goal of reading 50, at least 52 books. You know what I mean? So I hope that makes sense. So anyway, I've completed nine of those prompts, so I'm very, very excited. Uh, so I'm just going to get started with the books and I'll tell you guys uh, where they fit in each of these things. For the letter F, I read The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetis. Ruta Sepetis is one of my favorite authors. She writes historical fiction and her books are always, they're so interesting. Like I always end up researching about the topic that she writes about after I finish the book because she's so good at letting like the story stay in my head and I just want to learn more, more about it. Uh, but in this book, we follow um, a group of kids during the time of Spain's uh, Francisco Franco, I think that's his name. Um, he was a dictator in Spain. I didn't even know Spain went through a dictatorship period. <laughs> like, so I would, that was news to me. We follow this young guy. What is his name? Daniel, who is, uh, who he's from Texas. He's from Dallas. Uh, but his mother is from Spain. So like during the summer, they go to Spain. Um, his mother is trying to teach him about, you know, his Spanish heritage. He teaches him Spanish. Um, so when he goes over to abroad, he makes friends with some other young kids that, um, that live there. And I gave this book four out of five stars because I saw the twist at the end coming long before I did. And it's surprised me because I'm really bad at guessing like plot twists and how things are going to end, but I kind of had an inclination of where the story was going. Um, but it didn't take anything away. Well, it did. It took away the surprise, but I knew where it was coming, but it still was um, super touching. Um, her books tend to be a little bit on the sad side because the events that she focuses on tend to be, you know, sad parts that happen throughout history. If you guys have never read a book from Ruta Sepetis, this is a good one. My favorite from hers is um, Between Shades of Grey, and that one is set throughout the Holocaust. Um, but this one, like I said, this is during the, I wanna say 1960s. This book also completed a ton of prompts. I uh, completed prompt number nine for a, a book set in a Mediterranean country. Also completed prompt number 24, a book that should be you think should be read in school. I think this is a good subject matter um, because some of the things that happened in this book we're still seeing the effects of it today in 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 the like well maybe not us in america but like spain is still work trying to work through the events that happened in this book so it's very very interesting if you guys haven't read this book like i said um you guys should read about it and then also it, it um completed prompt number 28 includes historical event you know little about. Then um, also completed prompt number 33, featuring adoption. This book talks about um, adoption. And then our main character here has an adopted sister. And then also for a country set, set in a country set, no, what? <laughs> 
set in a country starting with the letter S. This uh, is set in Spain. And woof, that's it. That's all the problems that this book completed. Then I read My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. This book was my favorite book of this month. I gave this five out of five stars. We followed the, the it's a dual, oops, sorry, I think I kicked the camera. It follows a dual timeline. We follow Vanessa who um, falls in love as a teenager with her professor and she has a relationship with her professor. Um, this book, Trigger warnings for everything um, in this book. Se sexual abuse, um, rape, emotional abuse. It's a tough book to read, um, but it's like, but it's good. Like, I feel like a jerk for saying that this is an amazing book and everybody should read it because unfortunately these things happen, like the events in this book, even though it's a work of fiction, they do happen. And there are pedophiles out there who are really good at brainwashing kids. And it just has, like, I have so many emotions, I can't even put it towards the emotions. It's like, it's anger and disbelief. And I just, I think everyone should read this book. Um, we follow, like I said, Vanessa, who had a relationship as a teenager with her, with her teacher. Um, her teacher turns out to be very manipulating, uh, makes her feel guilty. He is being, um, is this a spoiler? Hold on. Oh, it's not because it says in the summary, but like her teacher is being accused, uh, by other students of like sexual uh, assault. And so there's an investigation going on and people know that Vanessa was one of them, but throughout the years they said they stayed in contact. Um, but this guy is just so manipulative and and he's trying to get Vanessa to help him like this this proof I guess that's the word I'm trying to say uh, all the events like all these accusations but it's like she went through those accusations but he makes he makes her believe that they were in love so it wasn't wrong so she's kind of like struggling with that like like was it wrong or was I really in love or was I really being manipulated it, it's just it's a hard book to get through uh but at the same time I couldn't put it down I just I loved it so much so this is my dark Vanessa sorry that it changed the hue of the camera but anyway uh so this completed the letter M for the A to C challenge and for the 52 book club reading challenge it completed um prompt number three which is a dual di uh dual timeline we follow her as a, uh, her story in high school and then we follow her as an adult it goes back and forth um, because we're learning about the events that happened then um number seven an author who's published only one book i believe this is her first and only book that she's written then uh problem number 15 a book that mentions another book and in this book we follow um I think he's an English teacher and they're, yeah, there's, there, he's an English teacher and they're reading Lolita. Ironically enough, I've read Lolita. If you guys haven't read Lolita, you guys don't understand the connection between the two books. But anyway, they read Lolita in class. So there you go. Book that mentions another book. Then, um, number 23 an ending that surprises you. I'm not going to tell you guys what the ending was in this book, but it surprised me. Let's just say that it fits that prompt. Then also prompt number 34, a book that you'd give five stars to. This is the only book I gave five, no, this is one of the books that I gave five stars this month. Um, I loved it highly, highly, I cannot recommend enough. Then uh, also it fits prompt number 41, an endorsement by a famous author on the cover. And it says here, brilliant and stunning, an absolute must read. And this is, um, quoted by Gillian Flynn who wrote, who wrote Gone Girl, also an excellent book if you haven't read it. And did it fit anything else? Uh, no, th those are all the prompts that this book fit. Then I read for the letter O, Outsider by Linda Castillo. This is book 12 in the Kate Burkholder series. If you guys have been with me for any amount of time last year, you guys know that I love these series. Uh, these books, I read books one through 11 last year and I just kind of like devoured them. And finally, this book was on Book Outlet and I snacked it up. Um, this book was really nice because it kind of changed the format of the, um, of the story. Books one through 11 have always kind of been about like this murder that Kate has to solve 
It's kind of been the same formula over and over again, but in this book we follow a different formula in which we meet a, an old friend of Kate who is on the run because she's being hunted by um, a government agency because she either discovered a cover-up or she is trying to expose a cover-up. While running away, she gets into an accident in the Amish country, an Amish fam family um, that we know from previous book um, discovers her book, her, her book, her car crash. Uh, and that's how she ends up in the Amish community. And that's how she ends up finding Kate. So that's how it fits into the Amish mystery. But um, really enjoyed this book. It, these books are not really really big and that's why I like them because you get into the story right away and it's just non-stop from the get-go. If you guys haven't read any of the Linda Castillo books, especially the Kate Burkholder, Kate Burkholder series, that's the only thing I've read from her, um, they're really good. I highly, highly recommend. But anyway, um, this book met for the letter O and then uh, for the 52 book club, uh, it met prompt number two, which features a legal profession. Kate is the the chief of police. <laughs> I, I've read 12 books. I should know by now. I don't know why I don't know yet, but she is the chief of police of the this Amish country. Then also fit number, prompt number 17 for a character that's on the run. Kate's friend is on the run, like I said, from this uh, government agency. And then this also fit prompt number 52, and that one is a freebie. That is um, to redo any of the other prompts uh, out of the 51 previous prompts. And so I picked uh, another book that you'd rate five stars. I rated this book five stars. And then lastly, for the A to Z challenge, I read the letter W and I read The Wedding Date by Jasmine Guillory. No, Guillory. Uh, I really enjoyed this book. I had read um, The Proposal, I think, and I don't think that, is that the first book? I don't know where The Proposal fits in the whole series thing, but I read that <laughs> and I really enjoyed it. So I figured I would give her books a chance. And in this book, we follow this uh, guy and a girl who meet in an elevator. And I can't remember exactly what happens. I mean, I read a lot of stories, guys, here. So give me a break. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what happens, but she agrees to be his date for his ex-girlfriend's uh, wedding who happens to be marrying his best friend. So, um, yeah, it's kind of weird. And he kind of, I guess, didn't want to lose face. So there's it, like instant attraction in the elevator. She agrees to go with him. Uh, they, they fall in love. And of course, as in with any romance slash rom-com type story, there's a misunderstanding that could have been avoided if the characters just <laughs> talk to each other uh, but it still was really fun it's it's not a big book I read it super fast even though this is mar mass market paperback um, I really enjoyed it um, it's a fun book it's kind of like brainless it's kind of a good book to read after reading heavy books like the three previous ones that I've talked about um, but yeah highly highly recommend I have two more uh, two more of her other books so I can't wait to, to get into them this book also fit two prompts I think Number 26, an author of color, um, Jasmine Gillero it is a black woman. And um, I think that's it. Then I also read The Seven Deaths of Evelyn Hardcastle. Oh my God, this book was a struggle. I tried reading this two or three times and I just couldn't get into it. And then I finally found it available via Overdrive on my library app. And so I started it that way and Finally, I was able to read it that way, but I didn't care for any of these characters. We follow um, this one person who's trying to figure out uh, who was the killer of this girl who is the daughter of like very prominent people, a uh, very prominent family. And I don't know if it's just because I wasn't into it, but I never, okay. This person has seven tries uh, to be able to solve the mystery of who killed Evelyn and so every day he wakes up in a different uh, person's body it's kind of like a game of clue every day he wakes up in someone else's in someone in a different body uh, and he kind of sees the story from different perspectives because he's living every, every every day through this different person but like if he dies then the loop starts all over again and it was just if, if, if he died on purpose he would get like it was just very confusing for me. Um, and I 
never understood the, the reasoning of why he was stuck in the loop and why and how he got stuck in the loop. Maybe just because I wasn't really paying attention to the story because I wasn't getting it and I wasn't interested in it, but this was a struggle to read. And I was really sad because I had heard that this was an amazing book. Um, it says here, I got the Christie meets Groundhog Day um, from AJ Finn who wrote The Girl on the Window, I think. The Woman on the Window, I think they wrote that book. But anyway, yeah, I did enjoy it, sadly. Um, so it is what it is. This does fit a prompt though, a book with a decalled edge. And as I hope you guys can see, these pages are decalled. Prompt number 31, similar title to another book. This book gets confused a lot with The Seven um, Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Uh, the Seven Husbands instead of Deaths of Evelyn, another Evelyn Hugo and Hardcastle. So yeah, similar title, completely different plot. Then I also read um, the uh, Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. I had read Uprooted and I kind of enjoyed it. I enjoyed it enough to want to read another book from her. And I really, really enjoyed this book. I like this one better than Uprooted. Uh, and in this book, we follow this girl. What is her name? Miriam. Um, she is the daughter of this money lender person um, who is really bad at his job. He lends money to people and he, like, he is so good that people take advantage of him and they don't pay him back or they pay him back less than what he owes. So they are living in a very, very uh, impoverished conditions. Is that is that the way to say it? Like they're very poor until one day she gets sick and tired of it and she takes over his business and she starts like being the money collector and she actually starts charging people taxes on um, the money that they're owed and if they can't pay her back like She you better do something either work at her house for free or something and that's how we meet one of our other characters um, This was really good. It's fantasy. Uh, I, I thought it was gonna be a dual line But then as the story progresses you start adding more points of view from the story, which for me, it started taking away the enjoyment of this book. It would have been okay if I saw her point of view and then I feel like there's two main characters, her point of view and then the girl that um, she hires um, to work at her house. She's not really hired, but she's working to work off her parents' debt because they were one of the people that couldn't pay her back because they didn't owe, they didn't have any money. So she's working off um, their debt at her house. Uh, but then we start seeing like stories from um, other characters and the chapters are not labeled. So like, it's just like a chapter 13 and it's really hard, at least it was hard for me, especially when we started adding more characters to distinguish like which character is she talking about like at one point i think towards the end we have five points of views and because the titles are not labeled like it's like okay who is talking here and what's going on so um that took away a little bit from the story for me but overall i did enjoy it i enjoyed it more than uprooted like i said uh and i would be interested to read more from naomi i don't think she has another one it's not a sequel to uprooted although the cover art looks very similar uh, but don't let that take away from it um this is a really really good book and it's a standalone and i think this yes this fit prompt number 22 for a family saga oh and i forgot prompt number 25 a book with multiple povs and that is it for the prompt wise the rest of the books don't fit any prompts or any letters the book that I have here next is The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I know this book is super popular, but I had never read it. I never read it in high school. And so I kind of wanted to see what the big fuss was about. Um, I had heard that Jake Gyllenhaal narrated this book, um, like on audiobook, but I ended up reading it and I kind of wanted to hear, I have a kind of a thing for Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> um, but I ended up reading this book, like actually reading it because the the, the letters are pretty big and they're pretty spaced out and the book is actually itself is actually pretty small. So I read this super fast um, and it's nothing what I thought it was. Like I had, because I'd seen the, the, the previews for the movie, I kind of was, I thought it was gonna be just like rich New York society, li living in parties and having a grand time and you know, rich people problems type of thing. But this is nothing like that. <laughs> and the ending, I was not expecting it. Like that brought up the enjoyment of this book 
um more than i thought just because like i said i didn't it was i wasn't expecting that ending really really enjoyed it um a lot of people turns out don't like this book and don't like the writing because they don't like the characters but i think that because i wasn't expecting what i got i think that's what made me enjoy it a little bit more um highly highly recommend if you haven't read it i think it's a good one again surprising ending that could have fit the prompt for a surprising ending <laughs> and then i read two um graphic novels like i said these are the v the the graphic novels for v shrubs what is it called uh, a darker shade of magic trilogy and we have book one the steel prince and book two night of nights um and in this book we follow kel's uh step not stepdads but like an adoptive dad he, kel was you know taken in as a young kid but um anyway we follow the king's story as a young prince so this is a prequel. We don't even follow Cal um, in these books. And I I got these books hoping that they would be kind of a retelling of the actual books. And I figure maybe if I read a book with pictures uh, about it, it will help me like understand more, get more engaged. But this is a prequel to those stories. And, and I didn't really care for any of these characters. Like I didn't care for the story. I didn't want to know how the king got to be how he was like this is his story but i kind of wanted to know more about the actual world that kel lived in and that's not this <laughs> so uh these are books that i'm going to for sure declutter i don't care to keep them i'm not gonna go on with the series um with the graphic novel so yeah very very lit down then really quickly, last but not least, I read, I listened to two Audible uh, original stories. The first one was one of those flings. It was terrible. It was a, it's one of those books that had, it wasn't really a book. It had a full cast of characters and the whole book was dialogue, but it was very like without substance. Like I, it was just a stupid story, stupid people, stupid characters stupid plot <laughs> i did not like that book i gave it two stars i thought it was gonna be something fun like like the wedding date where two people you know meet they're trying to just have fun and not get feelings involved and i think the fact that we only got dialogue the whole story just kind of felt very superficial and we didn't really get to know like what these characters were actually feeling Granted, this is only about an hour and a half story, so there's not much time to really get deep. But if it had been a narr narrated story as opposed to a dialogue story, I think it would have accomplished more. Um, I gave it two stars, did not like it. And the other Audible story that I, that I listened to was Strong by Neil Schusterman. This is a novella within the world of Unwind, which was one of my favorite uh, series that I read last year. Uh, it was nice to dive into the world, but honestly, the character that we follow here, uh, this is supposed to be a novella between book one and two, and honestly, <clears throat> excuse me, I didn't remember this character, so I didn't feel too much attachment to what was happening to him and what happened to him at the end, but regardless, I still enjoyed the story. I gave it three stars just because it was nice to dive into the world of Unwind again. Uh, but it's not something that I would actually recommend. I think you can read Unwind without having read that short story. But anyway, that's everything I read in February. I hope you guys enjoyed. This video is super long. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but um, all the, everything, I, all my stats and everything is going to be in the description box. So I hope you guys check it out. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.